From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. A group of 45 men dressed up as Thomas Magnum from the 80s series Magnum P.I. were thrown out of the Tigers White Sox game in Detroit this week. The group were there for a bachelor party and they were tossed from Comerica Park because they were told that one of them was smoking while another was catcalling. Each Magnum was decked out in a Hawaiian shirt, a fake or real mustache, and a Tigers hat. The cardboard cutout of Tom Selleck was also carried around and it was also asked to leave. Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield is blaming the team's 2014 collapse on Katy Perry, saying that she jinxed the team by making eyes at then-quarterback Trevor Knight. All right, then again, you know, if you're so easily rattled that you can no longer play well because a girl likes you, well, let's face it, you don't have a future in professional football anyway. The study says playing tackle football before age 12 could lead to brain issues. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, I played before I was 12 and I have no problem, cheesy poofs. If you must gain weight, the best place for that fat to land is on your hips, butt, and thighs. Fat stored there is actually good for you since it protects against heart and metabolic problems, according to a team of experts from Oxford University in Great Britain. Hip fat actually absorbs harmful fatty acids and contains an anti-inflammatory agent that helps prevent arteries from clogging. So while a big rear may not look flattering in tight jeans, it can help you live longer. Okay, well, what I, what I want to know is, how do I force the fat to leave my man boobs and head south? What's the most uncivilized thing we do in public? Well, if you guessed wear pajama pants, <laughs> you're right. According to a survey, all you people who leave the house in pajama pants, you need to knock it off. You uh, don't have big plans this weekend, do you? Well, sorry to break it to you, but the world is ending. Well, that is if you believe David Mead, a Christian numerologist and self-described researcher. Dave says September 23 is foretold in the Bible's Book of Revelation as the day a series of catastrophic events will begin, and as a result, a major part of the world will not be the same. He claims the Bible prophesies a woman clothed with the sun and a crown of 12 stars giving birth to a boy who will rule all the nations while she fights off a seven-headed dragon. The woman, Mead says, is the constellation Virgo, which on Saturday will be positioned under nine stars and three planets. According to him, the baby boy will be the planet Jupiter, which will be moving out of Virgo on that night. Mr. Mead says he studied astronomy at a university in Kentucky, but he won't say which one. Uh, he will say that the great change in our world will be the result of the arrival of Nibiru, a planet famous in conspiracy circles, but which actual astronomers, the ones who don't mind showing you their diplomas, say doesn't exist. David Morrison, a senior space scientist at NASA, says that if Nibiru were really on a collision course with Earth, uh, we would have easily seen it by now. But that's not dissuading Meade, who points to the fact that September 23rd falls 33 days after last month's total solar eclipse as proof of his prophecy. Hey, Dave, okay, you know what? There is one way to easily find out if you really believe all this. Just sign this little piece of paper says all your earthly possessions and financial assets will transfer to me as of Sunday, September 24th. You won't need them, right? All the major TV networks have turned down Sean Spicer's offer to work for them. None of them wanted to meet his contract demand for his own customized podium on wheels. Sunday's Emmy Awards had one of the lowest viewerships in the show's history probably because people were already tired of hearing about politics and they knew that's all they would get during the Emmys. And it turns out, they were right. A new study says that being neurotic can help people live longer, which is great news if you are typically neurotic about not living very long. John Lennon's widow, Yoko Ono, heard about a Polish beverage company's new drink called John Lemon. She threatened legal action, alleging that it infringed on a trademark of her late husband. The company has now agreed to change its drink's name to On Lemon. Ironic that the sourpuss in this story is Yoko. 
Hey guys, if you want a girl to go out with you, don't waste your time on candy, flowers, or poems. Just find a way to play her a sappy love song. Whether you bribe the band to play My Heart Will Go On or earnestly hum truly, madly, deeply, simply let those sentimental stanzas melt her heart. Then ask for her phone number. In a recent experiment, single women age 18 to 20 spent five minutes listening to either a neutral pop song or a romantic ballad. Afterward, the women who heard the ballad were twice as likely to give an average-looking interviewer their phone number and agree to go for drinks. And according to the documentary film Say Anything, holding a boombox over your head playing Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes is a surefire winner. The World Health Organization is now warning that the world is running out of antibiotics. So, if you're planning on being sick in the near future, you might want to relocate to another planet first. I hear Nibiru is pretty close. Now they're saying that Roomba vacuums could be collecting data about the layout of your home and then sold. That's right, Big Brother sucks. A California man went on a rampage that ended with him beating up a grocery employee with a bag of bread. The 39-year-old man allegedly entered the Safeway yelling and screaming. One employee attempted to calm the man, but he responded by pushing him several times, then grabbing a loaf of French bread and hitting him in the face. The employee did not sustain major injuries, but he is pressing charges for gluten assault. Music not only lowers blood pressure, but also it does so nearly as effectively as cutting salt from your diet or exercising, according to researchers from Ruhr University in Germany. But there is one big gotcha. It has to be classical music. The study, led by Hans Trapp, played Mozart's Symphony No. 4 in G minor, various dances by Johann Strauss, and ABBA songs to 60 volunteers. Each person's blood pressure was taken before and after listening to the music. Mozart lowered systolic blood pressure, Strauss did as well, meanwhile the Swedish pop group ABBA had no effect whatsoever, and dubstep immediately put people in the ICU. Today's Daily Dose of Weird News is dedicated to my friends at Cross International. A single gift of $60 will feed a child for a full five months in Kenya and South Sudan. I made my gift and sponsored three children, but I'm also asking you to sponsor just one, a single one-time gift of just 60 bucks. Call 866-822-4883 to donate now. That's 866-822-4883. Or give online by clicking the Cross International banner at dailydoseofweirdnews.com. And thank you in advance for being a generous weirdo. If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. To become an official weirdo, click that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos, and click that like button to let the world know that you are an official weirdo.